news. I do have a consent agenda, um, but before that, no one signed up for public comment. Um, so, on the consent agenda, um, I'll read out the numbers. If anything needs to be pulled, please let me know. First up is RS-2024-358 uh, by Sepulveda. Oh, let me just read the numbers. RS-2024-377 by Cash and Styles. RS-2024-378 by Hill. RS-2024-379 by Benedict Hillgat and Bradford. Anything need to be pulled from consent? All right. So let me read the captions. RS-2024-358 by Sepulveda, a resolution setting the location, date, and time for the 2024 State of Metropolitan Government Address. RS-2024-377 by Cash and Styles, recognizing Scarab Bennett Center's 100th year in Nashville. RS-2024-378 by Hill, recognizes May 4th, 2024 as International Firefighters Day and recognizes the hard work and dedication of the National Fire Department. RS-2024-378 by Benedict Hill, Gad, and Bradford, recognizes April 26, 2024 as Lesbian Day of Visibility in Nashville and Davidson County. Can I get a motion? Turn left on 3rd Avenue North. You made it. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to get the short route, guys. Sorry. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any not voting? Five in favor, zero against, zero not voting. All right. Going back to what's not. Ooh, I missed one on consent. Uh, let me take up RS-2024-376 by Coupon in Spain, a resolution... Uh, supporting a bid for the Nashville for the Special Olympics Tennessee to host the 2030 Special Olympics USA Games in Nashville. Can I get a motion? Second. Second. Any discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any not voting? Five in favor, zero against, zero not voting. All right. Now on to bills on second reading. I'm going to move this to the heel as we await council member evans who is uh, currently running a meeting um, the next one is bill 2024 303 by sepulveda amend section 2.222.030 of the metropolitan code to add members of the metropolitan government board and commissions to the list of persons required to submit an annual disclosure i um and going to move to defer this one meeting to track with some other rules changes that we will be considering um, at the next meeting. Um, and I have asked for that to be added to Council Connect, so if you guys could put some input in there. Um, I have heard from other board members, so it's just a starting off process. Um, I agree. I think it's a good idea. It's yeah. a good start. I don't agree with everything in there, but I think the idea, oh, yeah, yeah. The idea is well uh, needed because we need to start talking about it. And the other thing is getting these um, these before a day or two really helps a lot. So, okay. Council Member Cash. Thanks. Um, I have a, kind of a question about, uh, like I'm going through this packet of all the nominees. Yeah. And there are about five who, one of the questions I think is, oh, yeah, the, the have you read, signed, conflict. and returned your acknowledgement of ethical rules? And I know Earlier, I was in a previous meeting a few months ago. I was noticing that there were some that aren't, and I guess I'm wondering if, if and then we don't have to answer this right now, but like what we can do to make sure that that's a yes by the time they get to us. Yeah. Um, and what happens if they are a no and then never, like, is there some, is somebody following up to see that they yes. turn that in? Yes. Great. Uh, we could certainly ask that in committee okay. as of now. Um, okay, any other? Can I so move for a one meeting deferral? Can I get a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any not voting? Five in favor? Zero again, zero not voting for one meeting deferral. All right, uh, and I have one. A late filed item for from Council Member Suara. Is there anyone here to speak to that? Yes. The Lawson thing? Yes. Yes. <coughs> I'm gonna sign on to that. Okay. Um 
Yeah, so this is Lake Fowl because uh, Mr. Lawson will be at the Diane Nash uh, celebration this weekend. Um, we haven't done a resolution for him before, and uh, he's seasoned, and so we want to go ahead and, and recognize him, particularly when he's going to be in person. So what was the reason for the late file that you guys had that's, the notice late? That's why that, I he just, that he was going to be there. Yes, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Council Member Toops. I do have a problem with going ahead and approving it. I know that in past couple of meetings we have had council members who have held off from filing late resolutions um, because we, we said that we would no longer do that. Mm -hmm. um, and we have encouraged people to go ahead and write up proclamations. So while I really am glad that Mr. Lawson's going to be there, I, I just, I think to keep in uniformity, as far as myself, I, I can't support the late filed resolution. Well, I would urge my other colleagues to support it because we may not have another opportunity to do so. so. You could do a proclamation. Perhaps Councilwoman Swara could. That's true. But uh, any discussion from my other colleagues? I think we do have to consist it, but I hate to not have someone so deserving. It's a, it's a tough one. So. And a proclamation isn't as public as a resolution. I agree. All right. Any other discussion? All right. All those in favor for the late filed resolution? Aye. 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 Any opposed? And one voting no. All right, so that's four in favor, zero against, uh, one against, one not voting, sure. zero not voting. Yes. Sure, just maybe a, a way to reinforce that is to get it out to the council so that just say we're done. You have to, you know, this is the, the line in the sand from now on. If you, you know, you can always do a proclamation, proclamation if you don't have it in on time, but there needs to be a good excuse sort of to reinforce that so that you know, this doesn't come again, or people know that they have to more time. Yeah, I feel like we've done you, you send that, I think? Yeah. Okay. I feel like we've done that. Um, yeah, I guess just a, another email reminder. Just make a reminder, but I think you do have to be consistent at a time, otherwise you're going to approve some and not approve, and it gets to be a little Yes, difficult. which I think was the problem a couple of meetings ago where... Um, we had one for the, I forgot which event, and that one was pushed through as a late filed, um, but then other council members were discouraged from filing late filed um, resolutions. So. Yeah. Okay, and Council Member Evans is still not here. Yes. Could you also vote on the content of that? Yes, on the can on the content. All right. Which is Council Member Toombs, do you want to be recognized on the content? Yes. 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 Do you want to speak to the content? Am I speak oh I'm speaking to the content. Yes. Uh, I don't have it in front of me. I can speak to it. It, okay. it is a, it's a non-binding resolution honoring uh, Reverend James Lawson. Mm -hmm. so if there's questions, I'm happy to answer it. Okay. Questions. All right. Any questions? All right. On the content, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any not voting? Five in favor, zero again, zero not voting on the content. Okay. And... We'll go into confirmations. Yeah, wait. There's one oh. more. Ah, uh, yes. All right. Uh, next is a late filed amendment uh, to BL 2024-306 by Councilmember Coopin, an ordinance to designate a certain portion of Second Avenue North to a tourism improvement zone and to grant the businesses that uh, front their, their on certain privileges. Uh, can I get a motion? So moved. Second. Second. All right, Council Member Coopin, why was your amendment late filed? Um, thank you for recognizing me, Chair. Uh, so this is a bill that is um, giving some uh, opportunities to the businesses on Second Avenue who have been struggling due to the reconstruction after the bomb. 
um, giving them some tools and things to draw traffic over there. Um, as the bill was filed timely and was released, I started getting a lot of questions, both positive and negative, about the fact that the bill was closing um, Second Avenue. People were either very excited or not excited. Um, as we dug into the content of it, there was a certain section that does say that this bill is closing Second Avenue, um, and that wasn't really the intent. The road was closed because of NDOT. Um, so it became apparent um, kind of late Friday that we needed to pull that back out, otherwise that could have caused a problem um, down the road as they tried to reopen the street. Um, I considered moving it all to timely file it, but these businesses have already been hurting very drastically, so and have been waiting for this bill to pass to start doing some things to drive traffic, so felt that it would be appropriate to late file that one change and keep the bill moving. Yes. When you say traffic, are you, do you is the intent to allow, like, once construction and, and rebuilding of Second Avenue is finished, to allow for, um, for for car traffic, or are we putting an emphasis on on foot traffic? So, I appreciate the question. Um, that that that's why we're pulling this out. The intention of the bill was not focused on tra traffic or lack thereof. It was more focused on tools that the businesses could have that they wouldn't normally be allowed to have in downtown Nashville. Um, people started driving more of the focus on that that piece and asking what was going to happen after and it was going to be a pedestrian zone long term and that wasn't the intent of the bill. Um, so the intent is to kind of follow NDOT's lead as far as what's closed and open. So could it wait till next meeting or your argument is that it can't wait because the businesses are... My argument, yeah, my argument is that the businesses have been waiting. This, this took a lot longer than it should have because of some state issues we ran into around alcohol and, and permitting and stuff like that. So. The argument is we need to keep food for the business's sake, sounds down. Well, as far as I go, to keep in uniform with what I just did with uh, Councilmember um, Sora and uh, Toombs's resolution, I think one meeting uh, it is uh, appropriate. Um, I don't think it'll it'll damage a whole lot. Um, I think it's. We need to be consistent about trying and filing things on a timely manner. Now, if I don't, there have been some rezonings where we have approved late filed amendments. Um, I just don't see this um, in the same boat as that. Um, any council members have any other opinions? Council member Cash. This is on third reading. Second. The, the, not the bill itself. It's on second. second. And it's not amendable on third. It's not amendable on third. It's not amendable on third. Except for the suspension of rules. Well, right. you could suspend the rules, but. Right. You can trying to break less rules, not yeah. 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 Can I Can I ask a clarifying question? Um, and, and just learning, my understanding was that the reason that there was a challenge with um, non binding resolutions being late filed was due to the rule change. Mm -hmm. And so that I heard that pushback for that. Mm -hmm. To me, this might fall into a different, uh, different category as far as kind of keeping it moving and with a small technical change to what's going on mm -hmm. um, requested by the departments. Yeah. For me personally, um, since this will not impact um, in the same manner that some of the rezonings have, right, that, oh, this amendment was you know, submitted, but for some reason it wasn't submitted on time, but it went to to the staff on time, right? That it, It's a little bit different that way. We've approved certain things that way. I guess it's really up to the committee itself. Um, my goal is to make sure that everyone files timely, right? Um, and if it could wait a meeting to me, then it should wait um, to, you know, make sure that we are consistent in that. But I hear you, yeah? Any other committee members? All right, it has been moved. We'll go ahead and take a vote. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Yeah, I think I agree with you on this one. It's not gonna adversely affect anything. Okay. So, no. No, and I'm gonna know any not voting. So it's it's two and two. So there's two, 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 three. two and three. Yes, my, I'm sorry. This is what happens when you don't sleep. All right, three in favor, two against. Uh, 
No, the other way around. <laughs> Two in favor, three against. Sounds good. Is that all right? <laughs> Two in favor, three against, uh, zero not voting. All right. Thank you so much, Council Member Koopman. All right. I didn't miss any besides um, Council Member Evans that we're waiting on, correct? Correct. Okay. Let's go with elections and confirmations. Uh, first one up is Nathaniel McDowell for a term expiring on February 8, 2027 to the Bicycle Pedestrian Advisory Commission. Is Mr. Okay. Let's take, yes. Um, sorry, we'll wait on that one. Uh, first one up is Bicycle, Bicycle and Pedestrian Advisory Commission election to fill a vacancy for a term expiring on April 16, 2027. First up is Carrie Rogers, nominated by Councilmember Emily Benedict. Mr. Rogers, do you want to pull up your seat sure. to the middle? All right, would you like a parking validation or a bus pass? No, I wouldn't, but I would like a cover over the bike rack. Okay. <laughs> okay. That sounds nice. All right, do you currently live in Davidson County? Yes, I do. Do you serve on any other Metro Boards and Commissions? Yes, I serve on the uh, Transportation Licensing Commission. Will you be rolling off of that in t if you were no. to be nominated? No, You could do both? Yeah, because unfortunately, the BPAC bill uh, will not have a lot of authority. They can only advise, and unfortunately, no one has to take the advice. Uh, theoretically, on the licensing commission, we do have authority. And I might also point out that uh, we're in charge of uh, bike and scooter share uh, on the licensing commission, which obviously has some overlap with uh, the bike ped bike ped commission. Yeah. All right. Um, so why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and why you're interested in serving? Well, I've lived in uh, Nashville for about 40 years now. I live in Inglewood in uh, the great District 7. Uh, I started riding a bike about 20 years ago after I had a little bout with cancer and just kept going. I became active in uh, bike advocacy in 2008 when the uh, Metro Legal Department decided that the police department couldn't write tickets for parking in bike lanes even though it was already illegal. Uh, aren't the lawyers great? And so we had to pass another bill making it illegal a second time. And since then I've been involved in various things uh, and uh, writing bills at the legislature. I used to work there so I know a little bit about legislative affairs. I actually wrote the BPAC bill, although it got rewritten a few times uh, during the process because this position was actually supposed to be a council member elected by council. But somewhere it got changed, <laughs> which is fine. Uh, that's the way things happen. So I uh, was a founder of Bike Walk Tennessee, I'm a former board member of Walk Bike Nashville, and uh, spent a lot of time on an e-bike on the greenways of Shelby, Shelby Bottoms. And I'm hopeful, you know, we had a BPAC for a long time that was created uh, by uh, Mayor Dean. And it did a lot of good work, uh, but the people on it were really nice. And I want a group that's more activist, that's willing to challenge the bureaucracy a, a little bit. Okay. Thank you so much. Councilmember Benedict, do you want to speak to your nominee? Thank you. Yes, I would. I appreciate it, Chair. So Mr. Rogers um, is, is very involved. I do want to um, address the point that he is on the Transportation Licensing Commission. I did check with Director Darby uh, at, uh, before nominating him up to this position and he is allowed to serve on both so I hope that there's no concerns there in regards to that. Um, he is a leader in our community, an innovative thinker. He's been a huge resource for me in my time, time in office and certainly has helped me develop my um, knowledge base as well as my values around how we move in the city. And so I think that um, as, as someone who rode her bike and got hit by a car a long time ago, he understands what that's like. And so he knows the types of changes that we need to see in this city. He's a, he's travels and he's, he's aware and, and on top of things that happen in other cities and wants to make those changes here. So I think, I can't think of a, a guy with, uh, a candidate with more passion than what he has around this issue. And I think that uh, with his experience that he just outlined, he'll be fantastic. Thank you, Council Member. Uh, Mr. Rogers, I have three questions. Um, will you commit to uh, promote equity while serving on this committee? Yes, absolutely. In fact, 
on the Transportation Licensing Commission, one of the things we, I think we haven't done is make sure that every community has been served by uh, the scooter and bike share. And that's one of the things I'd like to improve uh, in the future. Thank you. Will you be able to meet the time commitment? Yes, I'm retired, so. Okay. I got nothing better to do. All right. Actually, I'm not totally true. But. <laughs> and then uh, my last question. In your questionnaire, you stated that we needed aggressive improvements to our infrastructure along with political will. Can you elaborate on that? Yeah, if you look at national rankings of bike and walking uh, friendliness, Nashville is always much closer to the bottom than the top. Uh, you know, cities like Seattle, Austin, uh, Portland, uh, Minneapolis do much better. Uh, than Nashville does, and there's no reason for that. Uh, it's not just money. I mean, obviously money's part of it, but it's the political will to change the infrastructure because studies show that if you make things safer for bicycle riders and for pedestrians, you also make it safer for car drivers. And I think we need to keep that uh, point of view uh, in, in front of the decisions that, uh, that the city makes. Great, right, thank you. Any questions from committee members? All right, can I get a motion? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any not voting? I am in favor, zero against, zero not voting. Thank you so much. Thank you. And I don't want to be appointed to the Arts Commission. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Up next is John Norris, nominated by Council Member Berkeley Allen for the Bicycle and Pedestrian Advisory Commission. Uh, Mr. Norris, would you like a parking? Uh, validation or bus pass? Bus pass, please. All right, here we go. Thank you. Mr. Norris, do you currently live in Davidson County? I do. Do you serve on any other Metro boards and commissions? I do not. All right, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and why you're interested in serving? I've lived in Nashville except for school since uh, 1957. I'm a proud Aiken Elementary School alum. Um, I really started walking in earnest when I was at Aiken with my family, we lived in a rental house on Garland, which is near the Vanderbilt campus. I had to walk to Aiken. That's a pretty long walk for a kid. Did it for three years. Not long after, they moved to Fairfax across the street from Aiken, but it was too late for me. Um, for the past 20 years, not for the past 20 years, for a little more than 20 years, I bike commuted downtown, which was an adventure. There were, um, the ride there was almost e always very pleasant. Toward the end, I would take the what's now the uh, Cumberland River Greenway, just add a little bit. I'd go to the Y and shower. It was great. The ride home, it can be tough. If it's uh, dark and you know sometimes the weather was bad. Once I hit a uh, sewer grate that was installed parallel to the pavement, that had a very, very bad effect on my bike. Um, and that's one of the reasons I wrote this uh, piece about bike commuting in the Tennessee, and it was a national icon, if you remember those. Uh, I've had several pieces published. Um, and uh, recently, when my wife left her car downtown, rather than uh, call a ride share, or, or lift, I ran downtown to pick up her car, which was you now another adventure. And we like adventures. Uh, with Glenn Warner, at Phil Ponder's request, we uh, revised Metro's ordinances pertaining to bicycling, and they were, our revisions were accepted. And Glenn confirmed that Public Works was not happy with all of them, but we got it done. Uh, I'm a founding member of Walk Bike Nashville. I filed the charter. Uh, I supported I support Walk Bike Nashville financially. As far as experience, I was the first BPAC chair for two years. We got an extra year. We got a lot done. Storm sewer grates installed correctly. Uh, bike racks, artistic bike racks, green bike lanes, maps, bike share, and so on. I'm a former uh, a member, former member and chair of Greenway's an Open Space Commission. I'm a longtime board member and a former president of Greenway's for Nashville. So I, I've been in some leadership positions. I have good judgment and get along with people. And that's in today's climate, that's not always that easy. But I, I work at it, and with one of the Greenway projects, it really paid off. Uh, I'm not anti-car, but I firmly believe that Nashville, to be all it can be, it needs to make it far easier for people to get places safely and more easily without using a car. For one thing, housing is really, really expensive. A lot of young people moving here, I mean, they can't afford the cost of rent, much less buying a house and maintaining a car. And so 
having safe walking and biking options can make it possible. It's important for the future of our city. Um, and I'm very, I'm very invested in safety. It's, we, we can't tolerate, you can't just do cost-benefit analysis. We've got to keep people safe. We've got to prevent all these deaths that keep happening. So, any questions? Well, hold on. Let me recognize uh, Council Member uh, Berkeley Allen. Thank, Thank you so much. Um, I have uh, gone on many policy rides that the BPAC used to hold, and I'm looking forward to the new BPAC reviving those, where uh, John Norris was one of the people that helped organize those. It's a great educational opportunity for council members to ride a bike around certain parts of Nashville and discover where we had great bike infrastructure and terrible bike infrastructure. There was a walking version of the same thing to see where there was that. So I have uh, watched Mr. Norris in action on the BPAC, and I also run with him sometime, mostly behind him, way behind him. Um, <laughs> So I know that he is invested in and knows from the, literally, you know, from the ground up what's needed um, to improve our bike and our pedestrian infrastructure. Um, and that's the focus of the Bike Pedestrian Advocacy Committee. So I, I think he would be a, um, a great addition to this new revised version of the BPAC. Thank you, Council Member Allen. Uh, Mr. Uh, Norris, I have three questions. Um, will you commit to promote equity while serving on this committee? Absolutely. Will you be able to meet the time commitment? Yes. All right. And then um, what do you see as the biggest infrastructure need to promote biking and walking? Yeah, that's a very good question. Uh, there's so many. It's hard to pick one out. More sidewalks, more bikeways, shelter from uh, motor vehicles. Those are two things that come to mind. Uh, and, you know, Mass, mass transit is important, too. I mean, it, it's hard to do it all walking and biking. You need to have good mass transit. We rode the bus here today and uh, with bike racks on buses, with something else that happened during my tenure as uh, chair of the BPAC, the initial BPAC, which, by the way, yeah, that was advisory, but we got a lot done. You can get a lot done by talking with people and, and uh, you know, kind of get their ear and tell them what needs to be done. Great. Thank you. And, it, yes, Council Member Cash. Hey, uh, I appreciate hearing about your qualifications um, and your, your commitment to the to bicycle and pedestrians and their safety. Um, we're having a broader discussion about uh, boards and commissions right now. Um, and so I'm going to ask this question partly because of that. One of the questions on your um, the survey that you filled out is, have you read, signed, and returned your acknowledgment of ethical rules form? And yours says no. No, I have. It's right here. Okay. Uh, okay. It's, it's in my briefcase. I've got it. Yeah, I've read it. It was it okay. was quite lengthy, by the way. Yes. <laughs> All right. I just wanted read. to. It, I'm kind of wanting to do a little research. It was not on a fun that. read, but I read it. It was good. Okay. Thank you. Right. Any other questions? Yeah. All right. Can I get a motion? Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? <laughs> Any not voting? I in favor, zero again, zero not voting. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Up next is CATV Special Committee, election to fill a vacancy for a term inspiring on March 1st, 2027, by Jackie Schrago, nominated by Councilmember Berkeley Allen. Is Ms. Schrago here? Say you can't say There was one more. There was, the mayor had a nominee or two for BPAC. I just wanted to check and see. Will those move to the heel? I'm just going in order. The next one is, is yeah. it's okay. after this. Sorry about that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I don't know why it's been that way. My apologies. Here we are. Check next door. Okay. We'll move that. Um, we'll skip to Bicycle and Pedestrian Advisory Commission appointment of Anis Seba. Mm -hmm. How do you how do you pronounce it? Yeah, Anis Seba. That's good. Okay. Do you want to bring a chair forward? And uh, for a term expiring on March 12, 2028. Um, Mr. Say it again for me. Ennis Saba. Saba. All right, Mr. Saba, um, do you currently live? Well, you would you like a parking validation or a bus pass? Oh, parking validation would be fantastic. Yeah. Do you currently live in Davidson County? Yes. Do you serve on any other metro boards or commissions? I do not. All right, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and why you're interested in serving? Yeah, um, so a couple years ago, I started a food tour in South Nashville, highlighting kind of mom and pop businesses, immigrant restaurants um, in Nashville. So um, I've really gotten to know a lot of different small business owners through that, and also like you know, been through parts of town where 
Uh, again, especially in the Nolan's Pike, Harding, Harding Place, like corridor, you do see a lot of people biking late at night. And I'm pretty sure it's like one of the streets with like the most amount of pedestrian fatalities in Nashville. Um, so, uh, and I know for small business owners in general, just you know, having vibrant communities where people can walk and bike to them is really important. So I'm happy to um, you know contribute what I can and, and to bring their perspectives into uh, the conversation as well. Great, thank you so much. Um, will you commit to promoting equity while serving on the board? Yes. Will you be able to meet the time commitment? Yes. All right. And then I read that, like you were just saying, that you would include immigrant uh, restaurant owners on Long Nolensville uh, to include their perspective. Um, what are some challenges that you have noticed? Um, well, I think you know, when I think about one of the challenges, is, even as someone like me, like, you know, I do like to bike, I do like to you know, walk around. Is like in Nashville, there's sometimes not even uh, people just aren't even looking for people to be on their bike. Like even if there is a bike lane or something, there's just not like, that awareness to be checking for that. Which maybe in other places where it's a little bit more common, people are, drivers are just more aware of that. Um, so I think, I mean, one thing that I think could just be a good way to like promote more awareness is like you know more events where there are the I mean, streets blocked off and just allow you know people to be in an area free of cars and uh, to encourage people who maybe you know they have their bike you know, dusted up somewhere in the garage to you know feel like they can go somewhere and be comfortable that they can bike around the streets of Nashville. Great, thank you. Um, and then the last thing, uh, I'm glad that you brought that up and specifically Nolansville Pike because there is a bike lane that's not protected. So. Um, just wanted to make sure that you would help to advocate to have protected bike lanes along Nolensville. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Any questions from committee members? All right. Can I get a motion? Second. Yes. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, any opposed? Any not voting? Five in favor, zero against, zero not voting. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, was Ms. Uh, Schrago there? Um, she's not here. Um, maybe we can move her to the heel. Okay. Next, uh, for the Bicycle and Pedestrian Advisory Commission appointment of Mr. Nathaniel McDowell for a term expiring on February 2027. Is Mr. McDowell here? All right. Yes. I think this is the third time yeah, that is. Mr. McDowell has uh, been scheduled to be before us. It is. Um, Would so it, I have concerns about the commitment. And, yeah. Is is someone from the administration here to see if they want to withdraw or should we just take a vote to defer indefinitely? I say we take a vote. All right. I uh, can, well, let me just talk to you. Ms. Bugs is on the way. I literally talked to him on the phone yesterday. We're withdrawing him. Okay. He is withdrawn. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Up next is Equalization Board reappointment of Lori uh, Cast, Cast. 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 as an alternate for a term expiring on June 6, 2026. This is for the Equalization Board. Uh, Ms. Cast, thank you for being here. Would you like a parking validation or a bus pass? Parking. There you go. Thank you. All right, do you currently live in Davidson County? Yes. Do you serve on any other boards and commissions? Um, I serve um, on the Tennessee Association of Realtors Board. You should be fine then. Um, all right, tell us a little bit about yourself and why you're interested in serving. Um, I've served in the past. Um, I actually was a hearing officer for 11 years prior to being asked to serve on this board. Um, this will be my third, ter third time serving on this board. And I have over 20 years of experience in real estate, uh, both um, residential and commercial. Um, I own rental property in Davison County also. And um, it has been a pleasure helping people understand property values and uh, showing them the difference between property taxes and property values. And I, that's really why I love serving. Great. So I can help. Thank you so much. Um, would you commit to promoting equity while serving on the board? Absolutely. Will you be able to meet the time commitment? Yes. All right. Uh, are there any questions from committee members? Can I get a motion? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any not voting? Five in favor, zero against, zero not voting. Thank you so much. Thank you. 
Up next for the Equalization Board, reappointment of Mr. Truett Ellis as an alternate for a term expiring on June 6, 2026. Okay, we will move him to the heel. Next for the Equalization Board, reappointment of Sharon Emerson as an alternate for a term expiring on June 6, 2026. I have not heard from her today, so can we defer? Defer one meeting. All right, can I get a motion to defer one meeting? Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any not voting? Five in favor, zero against, zero not voting on a one meeting deferral. All right, next is the Equalization Board appointment of Patrick Franzone as an alternate for a term expiring on June 6, 2026. Not heard from either. All right. Can I get a motion to defer one meeting? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any not voting? Five in favor, zero against, zero not voting on a one meeting deferral. Up next is the Equalization Board reappointment of Charles Hank Hankla uh, as an alternate for a term expiring on June 6, 2026. How do you say your last name? Hankla. Hankla. And I do need a pass. All right. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Do you currently live in Davidson County? I do. Do you serve on any other Metro Boards and Commissions? No. All right. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and why you're interested in serving? It's going to be short and sweet. Perfect. My name is Charlie Hankla. I've lived in Nashville for 47 years. Retired from the real estate indus industrial real estate industry after 40 years of service. I've served on the Metro Board of Equalization for at least four years and survived 2022. I understand how the real estate markets work and how taxation is affected by the markets. I'm very sensitive to conflicts of interest and will have re and, and will and have recused myself on several occasions if there is any perception of a con conflict. I've enjoyed my service and hope to serve again at the will of this committee and the Metro Council. Thank you so much. Uh, any questions from committee members? Yes. Yes. I appreciate what you said about conflict of interest. Um, I'm looking at your, at your um, application form and it's saying that you have not, it, you answered that no, you have not signed and returned your acknowledgement of ethical rules form. Well, I, have. I have, okay. but it may not have. Sometimes things don't get from my home office to where they're supposed to go, but I've, I've reviewed it and signed it and submitted. Okay. Yeah, I will resubmit tomorrow morning. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Any other questions? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any not voting? Five in favor, zero against, zero not voting. Thank you so much. Thank you. Up next for the Equalization Board appointment of Mia Parker as an alternate for a term expiring on June 6, 2026. Ms. Parker, do you need a parking validation or bus pass? Parking. All right. Do you currently live in Davidson County? I do, yes. Do you serve on any other Metro Boards and Commissions? No. All right. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and why you're interested in serving? Yeah, so I... Um I've lived in Nashville for 20 years. I went to high school here and then um, graduated and went to Tennessee State, so I'm, I'm an alumni of Tennessee State. Um, my background is in HR, and then I've been in HR for, gosh, like 15 years, and then I got into real estate. So I am a commercial and a residential realtor. Um, and so essentially why I've gotten into real estate was simply because I love people. Um, I love Nashville. I love real estate. And um, I've been working for my broker, who is a commercial broker for the last 40 years. So being kind of under her guidance and having that as like a firsthand like go-to point in the commercial world um, has been very eye-opening, but it's also been very rewarding for me as well. Um, just because I don't, there's not a lot of us out there um, in terms of like what I see and you know, just being able to serve on this committee and on the board, I just feel like it's doing my part in real estate. Great. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Um, will you commit to promoting equity while serving on this board? Yes. Will you be able to meet the time commitment? Yes. All right. Any questions from committee members? Mm -hmm. All right. Can I get a motion? Somebody's All second. those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any not voting? Five in favor, zero against, zero not voting. Thank you so much. Up next for the Equalization Board reappointment of Sherilyn Puttis 
I'm sorry, may we defer her as well? All right, can I get a motion to defer one meeting? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any not voting? Five in favor, zero against, zero not voting on a one meeting deferral. Okay, next is the Equalization Board reappointment of Carnell Scruggs, who is here, as an alternate for a term expiring on June 6, 2026. Mr. Scruggs, would you like a parking validation? Oh, sure. sure yeah. All right. There you go. Thank you. All right. Do you currently live in Davidson County? Uh, yes. Do you serve on any other boards and commissions besides the one you're being reappointed to? No. All right. Tell us a little bit about yourself and why you're interested in serving again. Uh, I was asked to serve to continue my service with the uh, uh, Equalization Board because of my uh, qualifications as a commercial real estate advisor. I've been in real estate for about 42 years, pretty much all I've ever done, and uh, own a franchise since 2009, uh, SVN's Genesis Group, we're a national franchise. So, uh, but anyway, I want to be able to continue and, and assist with these uh, new taxations that we're getting rid of run into and probably need as much help as we can get. Yeah. Well, we appreciate your willingness to serve once again. And I, I will say that uh, Mr. Scrag is, is my constituent and has been very much involved in Metro and um, the area in Southeast for a very long time. Um, any questions from committee members? All right, can I get a motion? Senator. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any not voting? I have in favor, zero against, zero not voting. Thank you so much. Next is the Metro Action Commission appointment of Veronica Uribe for a term expiring on April 2nd, 2027. And I'm going to hand it over to uh, my vice chair since I will need to abstain. Okay. Um, uh, Ms. Uh, tell me how to pronounce your last name again, sorry. Uribe. Uribe. Uh, Ms. Uribe, are you a Davidson County resident? Yes. Um, and then lost my name. Oh, and do you serve on any other boards or commissions? Um, not with the okay. um, Go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself and why you want to serve on the uh, Metro Action Commission. Yes. Um, so um, I moved to Tennessee 30 years ago, and um, I, Nashville actually has embraced me for the last 25 years. Um, I have served in different um, boards with Metro schools. Um, I, I have worked with the community for in different positions, different roles. Uh, so informally, I have kind of helped people or tried to help and connect people, you know, within things that the city has provided. And I feel like uh, the city has embraced myself uh, as my own since I immigrated here. So I, I am, it'll be my desire to, to serve uh, and be able to help um, minorities. Yes. Perfect. Wonderful. Um, and before I move any forward, do you want a, a parking pass or, or a bus, <laughs> bus pass or parking validation? Parking, please. Thank you. Okay. Um, one question that I had for you is we've got your questionnaire here, um, but it was received late. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if that was a, an issue with the administration, or, or could you could you talk to the late submission, the late nature of, of uh, your questionnaire? Yes, absolutely. Uh, so I had an issue with the button. So apparently the first time I did and I I did not complete it. That was probably my mistake. Didn't save the whole thing. So when I resubmitted, it was late, and that probably happened with one of the questions over there with the ethics, because I know you're very keen on that. Um, but it, it was some kind of issue. So. But the last, the final submission was complete. Um, and I'm curious, you, you had mentioned working with youth before in, in, in education. Could you tell us a little bit more about that, those experiences? Yeah. Well, not not formal um, education per se. I'm not I'm I'm not a, a teacher professor, but I have uh, taught Spanish at Belmont University and informally at Julia Green um, Elementary, kind of uh, for after school. So the PTO reached out, uh, I'm from Mexico originally, so they were like, can, can you help us kind of bring that into the school? So we did that. Any other questions? Sounds like a teacher to me. <laughs> um, Thank you. So uh, you've acknowledged that the, the form says that no, you haven't read, signed, and returned your acknowledgement of ethical rules. Will you like go back, make sure you go back in and that that's taken care of or, or check with the clerk? Yeah, I would double check. They check, check with the clerk to make sure that's in, director. We, we can check with the clerk. Huh? We can, we can check with the clerk after. 
Uh, that, or see or can see to make sure. She can check with the clerk okay. as well, yes. Okay, I would. Thank Thanks. you very much. Any other questions? No. I've got one more question. Is there anything that you feel like could potentially cause a conflict uh, for you serving on the Metro Action Commission? No. Um, seeing no more questions, do we have a motion? So we have second. Right. It's before it's properly moved, properly seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, any, uh, any against? Any not voting? One not. So we've got four in favor, zero against, one not voting. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. And I will pass the... Uh, Pass it back to the back to the All right. Thank you, Vice Chair. Um, up next is the Nashville Music, Film, and Entertainment Commission appointment of Timothy Reed Jr. for a term expiring on June 20, 2025. Uh, Mr. Reed, would you like a parking validation or a please. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Do you currently live in Davidson County? Yes, I do. Do you serve on any other Metro boards and commissions? No, I do not. All right. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and why you're interested in serving? Okay. Uh, name is Tim Reed. I've been in the record business for most of my adult life, over 30 years. I am two year, two, over two years living in Nashville. I was recruited by my company that I've been with 10 years, BMG, which is on Music Row. The head of that division recruited me to come out here to help broaden the scope of the office here to involve other genres under my umbrella. I have a team in LA, but I am based here. And as far as why, uh, this city has been an am amazing to me. As soon as I got here, I was welcomed by many in the industry on the music side. Um, one uh, commission member, Shannon Sanders, is one of the first group to welcome my wife and I here and it's just been an amazing experience. I've spoken at numerous colleges, been on panels. I really have, you know, through action really focused on growing roots with you know where I'm at in my career and the company and the city in general. Great, thank you so much. Um, two questions. Um, Will you commit to promote equity while serving on the board? Yes. Will you be able to make a time <coughs> commitment? Yes. All right. Um, and let me see. I think that's the main thing. Okay. Any questions from committee members? Can I get a motion? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any not voting? Five in favor, zero against, zero not voting. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, I'm going to take Council Member Evans' uh, resolution real quick so we could get that to see if it needs to be on consent or not for the staff. Um, All right, it's BL 2024 290 by Council Member Evans, amends chapter. 2.196 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws regarding lobbying. Uh, can I get a motion? So moved. All right, Council Member Evans. Thank you. Um, I do have an amendment for this bill. Would you like to move your amendment? I would love to move my amendment. All right, so moved. I'll second. All those in favor? Uh, well, well, let me. Yeah. Yeah, before we start voting, it's something that we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> like, I just carry. No, I'm hard, still on. I know. I'm still on the thing. Why All am right. I here? Councilmember Evans, you are recognized on your amendment. Thank you. So the um, so the amendment basically uh, what I did is I went, but well, first of all, I, I got feedback from a variety of uh, folks, council members, lobbyists, uh, the clerk's office. Also listened to the Board of Ethical Conduct um, in their meeting because this was one of the topics that. Uh, our clerk um, Kyle was sharing with them, you know, that this was something that was under discussion. And so the amendment speaks specifically to some of the concerns that I heard in particular about kind of the filing timing, um, some of the process improvements. So I really look at it as kind of a cleanup amendment um, to hopefully uh, strengthen the legislation that uh, Councilmember Murphy passed last session. I did
did remove the section talking about the cooling off period from the original legislation. And the, um, so I, heard, I got some good feedback from uh, council members about that. I think there's also a lot of questions about like, what does this really mean for me um, in terms of, you know, am I, are we trying to restrict, you know, employment in general, you know, kind of getting into some of those details. And I realize that needs a little bit more, I think, marination for people to think about. And so I think in the end, what I would like is if we have a conversation if we end up having to reduce council size, I think that that would be a very applicable section to think about related to like what could a future smaller council look like um, if that comes to fruition. Um, because I think that in general people, council members I've talked to, I think underestimate maybe their own power um, and the purposes that we have more space to diminish the, the perception by the public you know, that we're doing something that maybe we're, our advocacy as council members, you know, is it based in reality or is it based in what we want our future goals to be? So anyway, I think it's just a, a conversation that we had in the future. Great. Thank you. Any questions on the amendment? All right. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Any opposed? Any not voting? Five in favor, zero against, zero not voting. Now, uh, can I get a motion on the bill as amended? Second. All right. Do you would you like to speak on the bill as a whole or? Uh, no, I, no. Basically, what everything I said related to the amendment, I think, speaks to that. Can you it's, repeat it's, that? Just in sure. It's, yeah. <laughs> uh, let's record this and watch it ten Over more times. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, any questions? All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any not vote? Five in favor. Zero against. Zero. Not voting as amended. All right, thank you. Thank you. Now we're going back to confirmations. Up next is Planning Commission appointment of Asia Allen for a term expiring on March 31st, 2028. Uh, Ms. Allen, would you like a parking pass or a, a bus pass parking? There you go. Thank you. Do you currently live in Davidson County? Yes. Do you serve on any other Metro boards and commissions? No. All right, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and why you're interested in serving? Um, I'm Asia Allen, currently a licensed architect and project manager, um, having the opportunity to um, using my personal and professional background to serve my community is a unique opportunity and a big deal to me. Um, I believe I bring value to this committee just um, with my background and my professional experiences. One, I'm a Nashville native, so being here and experiencing the change and the growth, living through it, raising my family, working here, um, but also on the design aspect, you know, outside of just my architectural education, education, I have 13 years in the professional world, as well as just involvement um, in other community organizations focused on the built environment. Great, thank you so much. Um, Will you commit to promote equity while serving on the board? Yes. Will you be able to meet the time commitment? Yes. All right, and then I was reading your questionnaire, and you mentioned engaging with diverse communities. What do you feel the commission could be doing better to engage with diverse communities? Um, making sure we're listening. Um, that's, that's the experience, just my involvement with the Civic Design Center, but also just professionally is a lot of people don't feel like they're being heard. Um, and so making sure we're listening to the community, thinking through the things that they're asking for, showing empathy, and being curious. Great, thank you so much. Um, I'm gonna also uh, advocate for um, that we figure out some of the translation uh, moving forward for notices or uh, any rezonings, any notices that go out aren't normally in multiple languages, it's probably something that we should consider if we um, want to, you know, reach out to more people. Mm -hmm. So if you get a point out, I'm going to task you to push in that. <laughs> All right. Any questions? Yes. Yeah, I, I'm glad to hear that. Going on the Planning Commission, uh, a lot of my constituents feel like the developer comes with something, they're going to get it approved, and it's good to have an advocate in mm -hmm. there to at least listen mm -hmm. and, and ask intently with, with some of the things. I mean, I think we can just listen. Uh, without any concern, but then there's that empathy, which right. I really appreciate. Right. How, how do you balance this rapid development that continues and now our traffic is like one of the worst in the country with development with all the bad infrastructure, you know, uh, being backed up? And, and 
what do you think needs to be done? Um, I think we grew way faster than we thought we would and quickly outgrew the infrastructure. I don't know how you continue the growth without fixing the infrastructure. You just make the problem worse. Um, so I don't know, I, you know, I hate to say to slow down the growth, that's not possible, but um, we really need to focus heavily on, tra on transit and the infrastructure. So if someone comes uh, forward with uh, a major development but doesn't have the infrastructure in place, do you feel like you still should move forward with that? Just depends. Okay. <laughs> I, I, it, 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 you can't really. I know it's a scenario that you really can't. Mm -hmm. But I, I think my point is simply we need to be a little bit more concerned. Right. And because I I, we've, we've, we've flown past what we can even catch up on. Mm -hmm. And now, um, that, are you aware of the NEST bill, some of the new bills that are coming in in terms of global change? Or, um, NEST uh, bill? Yeah, bills that would eliminate single family uh, housing. I'm not. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just wanted to check to see what your perspective. It's been a discussion about middle housing. Have you heard any? Missing middle is what it is. Yes, I've heard that terminology. I know a lot of the design studios, at, like at Belmont, are, you know, um, ex I guess exploring ideas on middle housing. All right. Any other questions? All right. Can I get a motion? <coughs> so moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any not voting? Six in favor, zero against, zero not voting. Thank you. Thank you. Up next is Public Records Commission reappointment of Judge Dozier, Dozier for a term expiring on August 31st, 2027. Uh, Mr. Dozier, you don't know this, but I've been mispronouncing your name uh, each time it's been up before. All right, would you like... Uh, I'm just a yes. relative of Buck. Yeah. Remember Buck Dozier? <laughs> All right, would you like a parking validation or a bus pass? No, ma'am. I'm right across the street. Perfect. <laughs> All right. Do you currently live in Davidson County? Yes. Yeah. Do you serve on any other Metro Boards of Commissions besides the one you're being reappointed to? Not. All right. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and why you're interested in serving? <coughs> Criminal court judge for 26 years. Before that, private practice, DA's office, native Nashvilleian. Uh, I'm on this commission, I suppose, or will be, because the vice mayor asked me to be. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a flashy commission. Um, <laughs> no, we're, we're it is important, obviously. I mean, we're responsible for signing off on, agreeing with, or not all Metro records. I don't know if any of y'all have been out to Metro Southeast where the mm -hmm. records are stored. They're running out of room. And so we have retention period. Um, that we set. Uh, usually metro agencies don't get really involved or care about us unless we're dealing with emails. So we, we sign off on changing email retention policies and things like that. So the statute, state statute, requires a court of record judge to be on the commission. So Judge Shriver that was around many years ago was the judge I replaced, so I've been there ever since. Great. Well, thank you for your willingness to serve again. Um, I guess uh, time commitment, you're all okay with that? Yeah, I mean, we're, it's, you know, we meet at least quarterly, and the Metro clerk has the agenda, and the department heads come in and propose to have the certain volumes, reams of records. So it, it's time, it's not time consuming. Okay. Come across the street. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Any questions from committee members? Yes. How oh, the tables have turned. <laughs> 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 raise my right hand. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, all, all jokes aside, I've known Judge Doja for some time, I was assigned to his courtroom um, while I was at the public defender's office, a, a really conscientious jurist and, and somebody who I feel as if not only has demonstrated an ability to serve on this, but but knowing his his commitment to due process um, is it will be litigious in ensuring that Metro's records are, are kept well and that we are adhering to the letter of the law. Um, so you've got my glowing endorsement. So. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Great. All right. Uh, can I get a motion? Thank you. So, so moved. So. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any not voting? Six in favor, zero against, zero not voting. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.
Next is Sustainability Advisory Commission appointment of Joe Bass for a term expiring on March 14, 2026. Mr. Bass here. So can we do the ones that are, that I think we missed, yes, CATV and equalization, then I'll go get all of the, uh, the sustainability. Yes. All right. We're going back to CATV Special Committee. She is parked, but working her way up here. So. Okay. Then we will go to Equalization Board appointment of Mr. Truett Ellis, of Dr. Truett Ellis, for an alternate, as an alternate for a term expiring on June 6, 2026. Mr. Truett, would you like a parking validation or a bus? Oh, yes. Parking validation. Thank you. All right. Do you currently live in Davidson County? I do. Do you serve on any other boards and commissions besides the one you're being reappointed to? No one. Okay. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and why you're interested in serving? So I've served um, for several years now, and my main interest was I've uh, been in mostly in commercial properties. I've been an investor in Davidson County, you know, properties for over 15 years. And so I'm, you know, I'm very interested in seeing that people have a fair chance to, to get to have their site heard, particularly small businesses that sometimes end up bearing some of the expenses associated with property taxes. And so I feel like I have insight into that process, and I'm very interested in seeing that, that those people have a fair hearing. Great, thank you. <coughs> Will you commit to promote equity while serving on the board? Yes. Okay. Will you be able to meet the time commitment? I will be able to meet the time commitment. All right. Any questions from committee members? <coughs> um, I'm a little curious about the, the, the time commitment because I'm looking at your um, resume here and your clinical anesthesiologist. That's right, yeah. yeah the, um, <laughs> and so, so, so taking taking all that into consideration, just making sure that that like you you, you feel as if you would fairly be able to add, to have the capacity. I, to, I would. If you're looking at my resume, I think if you look down on the clinical side of all the appointments, the final one it says part part time. So, oh, okay. so I, I split. I have a, a sort of a torturous career path, but but I'd say it's split pretty equally and, um, and, and an alternate, so I've also told them that my my time constraints are usually one or two mornings, and they just seem to be happy with that because, nice you know, especially every four years, there's such a high volume. Can we close that so I'd say I'm like an overflow guy that does one or two sessions a week at P-Times. Those are my questions. Great. Thank you. Any other questions? Can I get a motion? So we have second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any not voting? Six in favor, zero again, zero not voting. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Is she here? She is somewhere in the building, but she hasn't. All right. Yes. <laughs> I was just thinking, sorry, Mr. Patrick was apparently here downstairs. He didn't know that I've been he here was since here. four. He, yes, ooh, yes. Can we please not defer him? I went to the and actually, office first. We would have to move to rescind. All right. Can I get a motion? A move to rescind. Thank you. Second. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any not voting? All right. Six in favor, zero against, zero not voting. You want to come up? <laughs> All right. Thank you. Would you like a Thank parking so validation or a bus pass? Uh, parking validation. You got one. I think I parked in the big city hall type. Do I got to need one? Parked where? In the off James Robinson Parkway there. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, that's one. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Why don't? Uh, do you currently live in Davidson County? Yes, ma'am. Do you serve on any other Metro Boards and Commissions? No, ma'am. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and why you're interested in serving? Okay, I served for about over 10 years for the Tourism Connection Commission, and then over the past six, seven years, I haven't served on any commissions at all. But what happened was I went downtown to uh, to appeal. I was a part owner in a hotel, and we had uh, several, they had several hotels. And I went over there to appeal and about four years ago, and I met Ms. Bo uh, Hoyt and her whole team of people. And I was just so impressed with the way they ran it. They ran that business. They ran it better than most businesses run or most hotels ran. And they were very uh, fair. They didn't, you know, they never overestimated and they were underestimated. They were very fair to when we were. And since ever since then, I've been interested in it. And I just got more and more involved into uh, appraisals and things like that. So. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Yes, ma'am. All right. Will you commit to promoting equity while serving on the board? Yes, ma'am. Will you be able to meet the time commitment? Yes, ma'am. All right. Any other questions? Just a quick yes. comment. I've known yes, Mr. Prasone Gash for 20 plus years. Yes. Uh, great community leader. We've known him in the hotel business for a long time. Good person. I'm glad to support him. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? All right. Can I get a motion? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any not voting? 
Six in favor, zero against, zero not voting. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dawn. Appreciate it very much. All right. Thank you so much. And we are continuing Sustainability Advisory Commission appointment of Joe Bass for a term expiring on March 14, 2026. Mr. Bass, would you like a parking validation or a bus pass? Parking validation. Go. Appreciate it. All right. Do you currently live in Davidson County? Yes. Do you serve on any other Metro boards and commissions? No. All right, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and why you're interested in serving? Sure, uh, I'm a Nashville native. Um, I never really left Nashville. I currently help lead um, corporate responsibility and climate response for Pinnacle Financial Partners. And so I've been really involved in uh, climate and sustainability world for a little while. Um, and I am particularly interested in it and got that role because I'm interested in it. I'm particularly interested in it because it's an existential issue but also an equity issue. Um, and I've been big on fighting for equity uh, in Nashville for a long time since I've been involved part of the education. Great, thank you. That was my first question. Okay. <laughs> uh, second question uh, is, will you be able to meet the time commitment? Yes. Great. And uh, any questions from committee members? Council member I just want to say that uh, Mr. Bass worked for Metro Schools when I was an employee there and has a great reputation and uh, I was obviously worked obviously worked hard and uh, was a pro at everything you did. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Any other questions, comments? Um, proud to be supporting a District 25 resident. There you go. Mm -hmm. All right. Can I get a motion? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any not voting? I thought you were going for it. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Six in favor, zero against, zero not voting. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, oh, Council Member Lee. Uh, up next is Sustainability Advisory Commission appointment of Linda Bregan for a term expiring on March 14, 2026. Ms. Bregan, would you like a parking validation or a bus? I would like a parking validation. Oh, thank you. All right. Do you currently live in Davidson County? I do. Do you serve on any other Metro Boards and Commissions? I do not. All right, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and why you're interested in serving? Uh, I care deeply about sustainability and I care deeply about this city. I've spent over 30 years of my career working in sustainability, both public sector, private sector. Um, I've lived here for over 20 years. It's been really exciting to see how the city has grown and all of the vitality, but I also think we're at an inflection point where we do need to keep, think about how do we also keep the livability and all the things that we love so much about the city and how do we do that in an equitable and fair manner. So I would just welcome the opportunity be honored to be able to help contribute to thinking about how we move the city in that direction. Great, thank you so much. Uh, will you commit to promote equity while serving on this board? Absolutely. Will you be able to meet the time commitment? All right, any other questions from committee members? Can I get a motion? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any not voting? Six in favor, zero against, zero not voting. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, next is Sustainability Advisory Commission appointment of Jason Carney. Yes. For a term expiring on March 14, 2026. Uh, Mr. Carney, would you like a parking validation or a bus pass? Parking validation, please. There you go. Thank you. Do you currently live in Davidson County? Yes, ma'am. Do you serve on any other Metro boards and commissions? No, ma'am. All right. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and why you're interested in serving? Um, well, I'm a native Nashville man. Uh, got all my education here. Uh, and uh, love the city is probably as close as I'm going to get to public office, and I'd love to have an opportunity to uh, serve my city in some capacity. Also, I was under um, Linda Bregan and Erica Hopstein under the uh, old committee, serving in the subcommittee with um, Ann Davis and uh, Tiffany Wilmot. So um, I've always been involved pretty long time, but just to hear recently some of the more notable things I did was been able to uh, put a solar system out of White Creek High School and uh, uh, help them to see how easy it is uh, and, and what options there are out there. Uh, so among many other things, um, just wanting to also see more uh, of uh, people that look like me uh, in the solar space and in sustainability. Uh, so you know, definitely equity is a, is a big issue of mine. And, uh, again, just again serving the city in the, in the passion that I that I care about, which is sustainability and renewable energy, is is my reasons. That's great. That's all. That's amazing. Um, will you be able to meet the time commitment? Yes, ma'am. 
All right, Council Member Evans. I just wanted to um, ask, is there a reason why you're limiting yourself <laughs> related to this is the closest I've been to public office? <laughs> <laughs> um, I've been close, and I've seen how you know, difficult it is, and I have a lot of appreciation for uh, those that do putting themselves up for public scrutiny. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, it's not easy. I was thinking about the military as a public service, but I'm too old for that now. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just that I, I see how hard you guys have to work, and I, I think see. yeah, you do a great well, job. Thank you for seeing that effort. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Appreciate your willingness to serve. All right. Any other questions? Yes, Council Member Cash. I've been asking this about, uh, several people this evening. Uh, looking at your um, survey, your your uh, application, mm -hmm. you on the last question. That says, have you read, signed, and returned your acknowledgement of ethical rules form? You, you've got no on here. Do you know if that's something you? I don't know if I did. Meant to put that or not. Okay. Yeah. Can you maybe before your first meeting check with the clerk to make sure that that's on file? Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. Any other questions? Okay. Can I get a motion? So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any not voting? Six in favor, zero against, zero not voting. Thank you. Okay. All right, next is Sustainability Advisory Commission appointment of Cesar Castro for a term expiring on March 14, 2026. Mr. Castro, will you like a parking validation or a bus pass? Uh, parking. Here you go. Thank, Thank you. you. Do you currently live in Davidson County? I do. Do you serve on any other Metro Boards and Commission? I do not. All right, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and why you're interested in serving? Sure, uh, I'm a Harvard trained urban planner. Uh, I currently serve as the Chief Policy and Planning Officer for State Agency in North Carolina, and I want to be able to bring those lessons to Nashville, which is my new home. Uh, <coughs> particularly keen on the, um, the intersection of uh, resiliency, sustainability, and uh, vulnerable populations, such as uh, the Latino communities uh, in limited English populations. So I want to contribute, in that sense, at the local level. So. Great. Thank you. Which answers my first question. And then second question, will you be able to meet the time commitment? Yes. All right. Any questions from committee members? Uh, um, you mentioned uh, lessons that you've learned in, in your time as an urban planner. Yeah. Could you sort of talk a little bit more about that and sort of like what, what, what is your vision for how Nashville needs to move forward specifically with development and sustainability? Yeah, I'm, I'm still new to Nashville, so Fair enough. You know, yeah. I, I don't have all the answers, but you know, some lessons in North Carolina, we have integrated a lot of federal funding into our the local kind of uh, interventions. And those interventions uh, range from commu community resiliency to also uh, physical resiliency. So integrating those lessons would be key in understanding kind of where Nashville is in the trajectory of their own recovery and their own resiliency efforts, and how we embed that in the long term. So that's hopefully what I can contribute. And how long have you been in Nashville? Sorry, how long have you been in, 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 in uh, Almost a year now. Okay, somebody Almost else has a year now. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. Okay. I'm glad that you, you said that about using some of those federal dollars and trying to, um, you know, solve this, this big issue, right? But um, I think it would be great to have someone to continue to push to apply for more grants and be more aggressive about them because sometimes I don't feel like the city is aggressive when it comes to our, our grants uh, that we apply for. So. There's quite a few opportunities out there. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. All right, any other questions from committee members? All right, can I get a motion? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any not voting? Six in favor, zero against, zero not voting. Thank you. All right, next is Sustainability Advisory Commission appointment of Carolyn Everett for a term expiring on March 14, 2026. Ms. Everett, would you like a parking validation or bus pass? No, I'm good. For downtown. All right. Do you currently live in Davidson County? Yes. Do you serve on any other Metro boards and commissions? No. All right. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and why you're interested in serving? Sure. My name is Caroline Tanner Everett. I am from Nashville. was born at Baptist Hospital back when it was um, existed. Um, mm -hmm. And I've spent my professional life helping companies develop corporate responsibility strategies that are really specific and authentic to their business, that leverage their assets and help the business drive value. And so I'm hoping to bring those skills to um, the city of Nashville and help us think about what's really unique to our city and how we, we build a sustainable future as a result. Great. Thank you. Um, will you commit to promoting equity while serving on this board? Will you be able to meet the time commitment? Yes. All right. Any questions from committee members? All right. Can I get a motion? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? 
any not voting. Six in favor, zero against, zero not voting. Thank you so much. Thank you. Up next, Sustainability Advisory Commission appointment of Jeffrey Zell for a term expiring on March 14, 2026. Is Mr. Jeffrey here? We will bump him yeah. to the end. Uh, next is Sustainability Advisory Commission appointment of Michelle Hammond for a term expiring on March 14, 2026. Ms. Hammond, would you like a parking validation yes. or a bus pass? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Do you currently live in Davidson County? I do. Do you serve on any other Metro Boards and Commissions? No. All right. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and where you're interested in serving? So um, I worked for Metro Nashville in the Department of General Services in sustainability for six years. Um, and for the last three greenhouse gas emissions inventories, I helped um, complete those. Um, so I feel like I have a lot of knowledge of how the uh, metro government and the sustainability uh, inside the city government works. Um, I now work for a um, consulting company in the building space. Um, and uh, I also helped with the two previous uh, sustainability committees under the two previous mayors as a Metro employee, um, I helped the committees with their work. So, um, yeah, and I just have a passion for sustainability and for Nashville. Great, thank you so much. Uh, will you commit to promote equity while serving on this board? I will. Will you be able to meet the time commitment? Yes. Any questions from committee members? Yes. I've asked this of a handful of people tonight. Um, on your um, survey, you, the end, there was a question, have you read, signed, and returned your acknowledgement to the ethical rules form, and you marked no, you know, if you fill that out, or can you make sure that you... I don't remember, because <laughs> it was a while ago, okay. but I make will sure make you. sure. Thank you. All right, any other questions? Okay, can I get a motion? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, any opposed? Any not voting? Six in favor, zero against, mm -hmm. zero not voting. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, uh, Ms. Shrego. Hi. You want to come up here? Thank you. Would you like a parking validation or a bus pass? Parking validation. Here you go. Thank you. You're welcome. Do you currently live in Davidson County? Yes, ma'am. Do you serve on any other Metro boards and commission? No. All right. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and why you're interested in serving? Well, I was originally part of the effort to bring a cable company to Nashville and help negotiate the contract initially and help under the Metro Council understand what it was all about. So it was at that time that we created the CATV committee. I served on that for about 20 years and then I decided I would like to do something else for another committee and I did that for a while. But then because they were back to rene renegotiating that contract with Comcast again with its 15 year uh, life coming to an end. Um, it seemed like this might be a time where I should participate in it again. Yeah. Great. Well, thank you so much. Um, will you be able to meet the time commitment? Yes. And then will you be, uh, can you, will you commit to promote equity while serving on this board? Absolutely. Great. Um, any questions from committee members? All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any not voting? All in favor, we already got it. All right, six in favor, <laughs> zero against, zero not voting. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right, we are almost up. Almost, kind of. All right, next is uh, Sustainability Advisory Commission appointment of Michelle Hammond. Did we do that? Yeah, we did that. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I didn't mark it, six zero. All right, uh, Sustainability Advisory Commission appointment of Curtis Johnson for a term expiring on March 14, 2026. Mr. Johnson, would you like a parking validation or a bus pass? Parking. Okay. Here we go. All right. Do you currently live in Davidson County? I do. Do you serve on any other Metro Boards and Conventions? I do not. All right. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and why you're interested in serving? Okay. I've uh, been in Nashville 11 years. I currently lead Tennessee State University Sustainability Program, uh, and currently, uh, recently, I served on some subcommittee meetings, uh, and I realized that the city uh, and 
Vanderbilt and some other institutions have their own sustainability program and we're not connected. Uh, and I think that we can, one, go after more federal dollars when they, when they show collaboratory uh, efforts, uh, and then two, uh, let's not duplicate what we're doing. So this was an opportunity to bring us all uh, together and talk about what each one is doing and how we can help each other. Great. Thank you so much. Um, will you commit to promoting equity while serving on the board? I will. Will you be able to meet the time commitment? I can. All right. Any questions from committee members? Mm -hmm. Can I get a motion? Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any not voting? <coughs> Five in favor, zero against, zero not voting. Thank you so much. Thank you. Next is Sustainability Advisory Commission appointment of Eric Kopstein. Nope. I think, he's, I think it's withdrawn. I think I saw. He is withdrawn. Yes, thank you. Okay, we're nearing the end. Sustainability Advisory Commission appointment of Jolene. 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 Mazera? Mazera. Mazera, gosh. <laughs> Jo Jo Lynn. There you go. Jo Lynn Okay. Uh, Parking. Yes. <laughs> I'm try and remember your Thank name you. up there. Uh, for a term expiring on March 14, 2026, uh, Ms. Mezzera, do you currently live in Davidson County? Yes. Do you serve on any other Metro boards and commissions? No. All right. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and why you're interested in serving? Uh, so I'm a Nashville native and um, have three children here and a grandchild. Um, I work in sustainability all day. That's my career is in sustainability and climate um, at the at, at Tennessee Valley Authority. So at a federal level and a and multi-state level. Uh, and so I'm really excited. And I also teach at Lipscomb University at the Institute for Sustainable Practice. Um, and I'm excited about an opportunity to have an impact in my actual community. I do a lot of work at a, at you know at the state and federal level, but at local opportunity. Great. Thank you so much. Uh, will you commit to promoting equity while serving on the board? Yes. Will you be able to meet the time commitment? Yes. All right. Any questions from committee members? Can I get a motion? So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any not voting? Five in favor, zero against, zero not voting. Thank you so much. Thank you. Next, Sustainability Advisory Commission appointment of Jennifer Wang uh, for a term expiring on March 14, 2026. Ms. Wang, would you like a parking validation yes. or a bus pass? Parking, please. All right, here we go. Thank you. Thank you. Do you currently live in Davidson County? Yes. Do you serve on any other Metro Boards and Commissions? No. All right, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and why you're interested in serving? Sure, so I have a background in corporate finance, startup operations, and corporate strategy. I moved to Nashville in 2019 to work at Assurian. I have since transformed my career to work 100% in climate change. Um, and that's a whole other story that I won't bother you all with. But um, it basically came from an interest in racial justice, racial equity, and kind of a lot of self-education on that which led me to caring about climate justice, which led me to caring about climate change. So currently I work for a global nonprofit that supports entrepreneur ecosystems, startup ecosystems for clean tech entrepreneurs. We operate in uh, California and New York and then 11 different countries throughout the world with a focus on equity and the global south. Um, I'm really involved in the local community here, um, racial justice wise. So I'm, I was on the founding board of API Middle Tennessee. I rolled off last year. I'm now on the board of the Maddox Fund. Um, I started the JEDI Committee of the Tennessee Environmental Council, so DEI with a J on it. Um, and then uh, I'm on the board of Turnip Green Creative Video Center. So this committee, I feel like, is a way for me to continue to contribute to Nashville in a way that can protect our citizens from climate disasters, but also can really take advantage of the co-benefits that investing in sustainability and regeneration will create for everyone, with specifically a focus on who's at the table, whose voices are being heard. I'm involved in the Native American community too, as well, so really care about having their voices be heard as well. Great. Thank you so much. That's amazing. Um, will you be able to meet the time commitment? Yes. All right. Any questions from committee members? All right, can I get a motion? So move. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any not voting? Five in favor, zero against, zero not voting. Thank you so much. Last one. Mm -hmm. Sustainability Advisory Commission appointment of Erica Weeks for a term expiring on March 14, 2026. Ms. Weeks, would you like a parking validation? Parking. Parking. Thank you. Thank you. 
Do you currently live in Davidson County? I do. I live in Mr. Ruffles. So. <laughs> <laughs> do you serve on any other Metro Boards and Commissions? I do not. All right. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and why you're interested in serving? Yeah, I am Erica Weeks. I am an architect by my education and the first half of my career. Second half of my career, I've been in the built environment space as a sustainability consultant, making buildings more energy, water, and materials efficient, as well as great places for people to be. Um, I bring a lot to the table from a technical expertise background, things that are you know, inherently how a building is put together, how a building operates, things of that nature that help really define what we can do from an energy efficiency or water efficiency standpoint. I also serve in different capacities with the U.S. Green Building Council, and I'm on their Water Efficiency Technical Advisory Committee as we go into the next phase of pushing the envelope for green building. So I think a lot of my technical expertise helps outfit the group within um, the city of Nashville to describe many things that can be done from an infrastructure to a building-related standpoint. Great, thank you. Uh, will you commit to promoting equity while serving on the board? Yes. Will you be able to meet the time commitment? Yes. All right. Any other questions from committee members? Mm -hmm. All right. Can I get a motion? So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? All right. Uh, any opposed? Any not voting? Five in favor, zero against, zero not voting. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Last item is a proposed amendment for Rule 42 by Council Member Coopin. It is my understanding that Council Member Coopin intends to defer one meeting. Uh, so can I get a motion to defer one meeting? So moved. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any not voting? Oh, good. You're, she's not voting. <laughs> yeah. Five in favor, zero against, zero not voting on a one meeting deferral. Yes. Yeah. Director Darby. Um, we still have item 31 on the agenda. <laughs> Mr. Ezel uh, is not here on hold, and the request came from the administration to defer one meeting. All right. Uh, for one meeting. All right. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any not voting? Five in favor, zero against, zero not voting. Okay. That concludes the rules. We are adjourned.